Hello? Oh, hello. My name's Adam Smith. I'm calling from NobelPrize.org, the website of the Nobel Prize in Stockholm. Okay. We have a tradition of recording, as you may know, very short interviews with new laureates. Uh, you don't want... Oh, you, we can do it a little bit later with my husband. Are you with you your husband the at the phone? moment? No, no, he's still... He's still <laughs> he went back to sleep. <laughs> How very wise of him. <laughs> it must be very nice to be awarded in each other's company. Yes. As long as you're woken up at night, it's good that <laughs> you are both woken up for the same reason. <laughs> and indeed with Michael Kremer, because you've worked very closely with him as well. Yes, no, no, this is, this is wonderful. He was, he's not, he was not with us today, but <laughs> this was wonderful. Uh, this, you know. uh, Michael, uh, uh, Michael Kremer is the first who went to Kenya and, and ran, started running this experiment. And very early on, we all learned from, his, uh, <laughs> from what he was trying to do and his mistakes. And it was, um, it's been a wonderful ride ever since then. Mm. And and the key is that you need to understand the lives of the people you're trying to help. Exactly. And trying to understand them uh, a little bit more deeply in order to uh, devise effective policies to help them get out of poverty. Mm. Because human behavior is often surprising and not what one would expect. Exactly. And without spending some time understanding the life of the intricacy of the lives of the poor and why they make the choice that they make and why something that might seem at first surprising makes a lot of sense in a particular logic, it is uh, impossible to, to, to design the right approach. So what uh, the intuition that uh, we might have about oh, this, a particular problem, this is what needs to be done, there is no textbook in, in school, so we need to give textbook. That was the first experiment that... Uh, Michael Kramer did, and it didn't work. And in a sense, people, uh, um, of course, running the first experiment was in itself a wonderful idea. But the fact that it didn't work was almost as important and revealing because it it made him realize, and then the rest of us, like, oh, things are not as straightforward as you might think. Uh, the obvious solutions uh, are not always the the real one because we misunderstood the issue. The problem was not the lack of textbook. The problem is what is in the textbook is not what the kids need. Mm -hmm. And do, does your work make, make you hopeful or also worry you that, that it's just every every solution has to be so carefully tailored to the people who it's being applied to that the work seems sometimes sort of insurmountable? Oh, no, that work makes us tremendously hopeful because, the uh, in a sense, the, there is a combination of, of, of um, specific and general so the specific is you have to understand what's the nature of the problem and uh, and, the, and the nature of each problem is, di is, is different. But what is much more general is the lessons that you can uh, draw from human behavior. Once you understand what exactly is the lesson, can often be uh, uh, carried from context to context. So if you take, for example, the case of, of learning that uh, Jakob Svensson was talking about today, we understand that the problem is not resources. The problem is not textbook. The problem is that the children are taught something which is much, much too far for them to understand. They are not taught at the right level. And so the solution becomes simple is, oh, we have to teach them at the right level. If they cannot read, we have to teach them to read, which is what this organization we worked with for many years, PRESM, uh, kind of uh, pioneered. Hmm. But then you, uh, once you discover that, that is actually a tremendously robust insight across context we've discovered. We keep running into the same problem from place to place to place. In mm. several states of India, in Africa, even in France, we have the same problem. And there, the, the, the solutions, in a sense, then can be the same. So you've learned something which is very general, and then from this very general finding, you can, uh, um, you can extract... Uh, uh, lessons that you then tailor to each individual context or that your, the, the policymakers will tailor to each individual context. There have been tremendous progress done against poverty in the last uh, several decades, um, and not just against income poverty, but also against the, the, the problems that are related to poverty, like uh, infant mortality, maternal mortality, low immunization, etc. And to, to, to a large extent, this are because better policies have been undertaken. Mm. And to a, at least some extent, it's because uh, people, the policymakers have been much more rigorous about thinking of 
what are the real problems, what the real solution to this problem, what works and what doesn't and why. So there is, there is plenty of reasons to be hopeful. Yes, that constant interplay between experiment and policy is extremely important, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Um, the topic will of course come up, so may I just ask you about the fact that you are only the second female laureate in 50 years of the Economics Prize and the only one now living. It's, it, it's a very hopeful sign, even though the statistics are somewhat depressing. Um, you know, this is, this, hopefully it's onwards and forwards from now on. Uh, I, I think it does reflect uh, the fact that the, the field is, is not, uh, there are not enough women in the economics profession period. Mm. So it is not just you see this problem at all levels. Not enough women go into economics as graduate students. Not enough uh, women continue to become assistant professor and then get promoted and then get uh, subsequently get recognized for their work. So we really have a, a, a problem in economics that is uh, structural and fundamental. That uh, the that that this you know lack of women receiving Nobel prizes before uh, a relatively small number uh, till today uh, reflects. And um, so, first of all, I think it is going to change because uh, there are more women among the younger cohorts. So it's going to improve. Mechanically, it's going to improve. But uh, second of all, not enough, not fast enough. Mm. And I think it's the, the, the profession is starting to realize that, in part, it's the, 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 the general climate uh, and the way we treat each other is not conducive. Uh, for um, having more women in the profession. And it's not just about promotion, but it's about the general environment and how people talk to each other and address each other in seminars and things like that, that we need to work on a culture that is more respectful and that will be more acceptable <laughs> for many women who think that they don't want to play the, the games of shouting at each other. I think we need to make progress there. We also need to make progress in showing to the younger people that economics is relevant for problems that they care about. Because I think women, but it's also true for minority, which we are talking about women, but it's even other mi minority is, is, is even worse. I think we see very, very few people who are non-white in the profession at all. And it's partly because they don't go into the profession, partly because it, the perception is that economics is not about real problems for the real world, I think. And I, I'm, hoping that, that, I'm, I'm hoping that this could also make a difference. Indeed. Well, hopefully today's uh, prize has been inspiring in both ways, both inspiring women yes. to come into the yes. profession yes. and also showing people that economics yes. can be relevant yes. to directly helping people. Yeah. I think both of these will attract more women, to be honest. I think many women do not see themselves as, like, thinking about finance, or, hmm. but they might be more likely to see themselves as doing things that are directly relevant to, to have an influence in the world, you know, against poverty or social problems more generally. Thank you very, very much indeed. That was a lovely conversation. It's been a great pleasure speaking to you. Thank Congratulations. You. and Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.